When you're watching Troy, I I have to say, okay, this is one of those movies that like it's historical, but it's kind of not 100% accurate. I mean, what what historical movie can really be 100% accurate if not, you know what I mean? If if it's not like just a a documentary or, you know, a full complete breakdown of it, you know what I mean? But this is a this is a, a an amazing movie on the retelling of the battle for you know the battle between uh, Greece and and uh, and Troy, <clears throat> the the city of of Troy. I think you know the the main important thing about this movie that you have to take into account that is it historical one hundred percent historically accurate? No, absolutely not. But I will say this, okay? This is this movie is so. Sexy. I mean, if you you want to talk about a cast, you want to talk about a cast. I mean, let's let's just take a look at this. How Achilles, Brad Pitt, Hector, Eric Bana, Helen of Troy, Diane Kruger, Paris. I mean, Orlando Bloom, Odysseus, Sean Bean, Rose Byrne as Briseis, Agam. I mean, Brian Cox is not. You know what I mean? But he does an amazing job as Agamemnon. I mean, the level. I mean, that's just. That's that's an amazing cast right there. That is a sexy, sexy cast. Now, there have been, you know what I mean, any number of inaccuracies in the movie. Um, it doesn't have, like, the best ratings on it. But I do feel like there were so many good moments in the movie that I enjoyed about it. You know what I mean? There was a part in the movie that's kind of, like, funny and kind of corny, but I liked it. It's kind of when um, they're gearing up to go to war against uh, against the city of Troy. And Achilles is at the front. Like his boat is like swimming forward, trying to get into the heat of battle. And the other boats are behind them. They're kind of watching them. And as they're pulling up, you can hear the uh, the boats going like, um, brothers in arms, brothers in arms, friendship, friendship. And I thought, I thought that was so corny, but I was also like, that's so hilarious. You know what I mean? Um, and then obviously, you know what I mean? They go into like, they, they storm the beach and they start going crazy. You know what I mean? Achilles obviously lives throughout it. And that, I guess, I guess kind of the, the overall, you know, sensationalization, uh, the, you know, they sensationalize the, the combat, the war, the fight. And I thought that the fight choreography was really good. I don't know how historically accurate it may be, but, you know, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna let go of historical accuracy for now, because I just feel like there were many great moments in this in this film um and i don't care about if it's historically accurate i care about if like the story is really good and it is really good to me at least you know what i mean if you know obviously i could look at it and i could nitpick and be like yeah that's not you know that's not good and that's not good and i actually have but overall i think that the movie is is one of those uh I think that this is one of those like history, you know, one of those history class history class movies that you kind of like watch here and there. I mean, it may not be age appropriate with all the violence, the blood, the sex, you know what I mean? But I do feel a sort of, it's a great opening or like it's a good, you know, historical film for like maybe college students or if anybody's like interested in it. But there's a point in the movie where, you know, there there's there is great wisdom that Achilles tries to pass on to his his cousin, uh, Patroclus. Now, I will say this, okay? People are kind of being like, Oh, they ruined it because Achilles is supposed to be, you know, him and Patroclus are supposed to be they're supposed to be lovers. They're supposed to be this, they're supposed to be that. Like, it's historical. He says, Patroclus, his beloved, and I was just like I mean, you know, I, I could call my, my brother, you know, a, or, or you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's, 
maybe it is rewritten. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe maybe that is a historical accuracy, but I didn't think it was that far fetched for them to kind of like interpret him as like a, a family member. You know what I mean? From from that, but maybe maybe I'm wrong, and probably I am wrong. But we'll 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 see what that that ends up being. But anyways, he's trying to teach his his cousin Patroclus about. Essentially, what to fight for? What is war? Trying to teach him that, like, a soldier is a soldier. Like, a combatant is made for war. He's made to fight. And he's taught his brother how to fight. You know, he's taught him how to protect himself, how to to go forward in the art of battle. But he hasn't really taught him what to fight for, you know. The, he hasn't... He's guided his body to become a, a killing machine, but he hasn't trained his mind to to think differently to 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 think outside the box essentially of like what is war what are we fighting for what is what is what does it mean for us to fight you know why would we sacrifice ourselves for what this one king wants you know what i mean it just kind of seems like he's greedy he he wants one thing he wants to conquer the world and i'm supposed to help him i'm supposed to lead him it's like who are you going to fight for you know so he's telling patroclus he's he has these wonderful moments of like him trying to do the right thing, you know. He's trying to find a, a path. And I really... There, there's a certain level of admiration I have for people like that who who seek out wisdom or, or try to find alternatives. You know what I mean? Like, he goes up to his mother and he's like, you know, um, there's this war coming up and I don't know if I should go. What, what do you think I should do? And she's like, listen, you're Achilles. You're, you're an amazing man. You know, you're, you're strong. You're healthy. You're a warrior. You know what I mean? But you, your name won't live on past this lifetime. Your name will not become anything greater than what we, what we have now. You know what I mean? You, you, if you stay here where you're safe, you know, with me, with your family, with those that you love, you'll find a wife, you'll have kids, and they will be your legacy. They will continue down your bloodline, and that will be, you know what I mean? That will be the future of you. But if you leave, if you go to this war, you're not going to come back. Like, she's kind of like, uh, kind of like an oracle telling him the future. She's just like, if you go out there, you're not going to come back. You know, you're, you're going to die, essentially, is what she's saying. And I remember, you know, obviously she tells him that. And I had to think to myself, you know, what it is that I would want in that kind of scenario. If I was, if I had a big war coming up or if there was an opportunity for greatness, for, for somebody to, to hold on to my name forever. And I thought about it. And at the time I was like, I think I had to be like 20, 21. I think I was like 21, 22 maybe 19 really I think it was 19 years old and I think I have the same feeling I did back then and that was I would try to reach greatness instead of maybe kind of like a, a family domestic life only because you know I guess I, I'm young but it's just more so that like choosing that route seems so much more I don't want to say enticing. Enticing is the wrong word. I, I think overall from from what I take from it is that like there there's a glory in combat. You know what I mean? Is it is it really glory in there? Probably not, especially not the way that they were fighting. But I, I think for me, if I was in that scenario, in that situation, choosing choosing to go fight in the war, knowing I might now she says that he's going to die, okay? But, and and obviously we know that he does die, but I was just kind of thinking for myself in the, in the realm of it of like, there's a possibility I might live and I, and I reach great glory and, and fame and all of these other things. I, I become a, a legend, so to speak. I become a, a, a warrior that is renowned for decades, for centuries, really, really centuries. You know, he he is talked about in history books, and it's why they made a movie about it. He's like this golden warrior. He's he's this perfect warrior, 
except for I guess the Achilles heel, but he is somebody that is kind of like I want to be I want my name cemented as the greatest warrior who ever lived, who was ever here on this earth, and you know, especially at that time. And I just kind of I kind of like that. I, I, I there's something about it. It's it's very, it feels very me, you know, and it was something that I was kind of like, yeah, that's, that's something that I, I would like to, you know, achieve, I guess, or something that's kind of like, for that time period, I'm not saying that now, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not interested in that in like, in my personal life right now, I'm just saying in the scenario where it's like, go to war or live a peaceful domestic family life. And I was just kind of like, I got to go see what this war is about. I got to go, you know, at least try for greatness, right? As opposed to like soft, easy, comforting, you know what I mean? And there's no, there's nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong with peace or love or family, you know what I mean? None of that. That's a lot more right up my alley in, in this, you know, in th today's modern world, but I just feel in my heart that if I was taken back into the past in that time period, I would definitely want to give my hand, you know, give my, I would basically try to like get into it. Now, is that really how I feel? Probably not. I mean, it would depend on a, any number of factors. Like, I would have to be born in that time period. And, like, war during that time period was so, like, casual. It was like, oh, we're going to war again, you know what I mean? It was such, like, a men, get your, get your swords and your spears and we're going to war. Like, it was kind of like that. And if I had that kind of upbringing, I'm pretty sure I would be more... I don't know. I, I would be a lot more like gung ho about about going to war and killing other people, but the way that I I was born and the way that I'm raised now is kind of like I don't want to kill people. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to, you know what I mean? I don't want to do any of that. So it's just kind of like it's based on the times, I, I suppose. But anyways, back to the back to Troy. <laughs> I kept on going on. I kept on babbling. Um, Dude, there's so much about this movie that I kind of feel. And then on the other side, you have Hector and you have Paris and you have kind of their like sibling brotherhood. And I thought to myself, I was like, I would do the exact same thing Hector does for his brother. And, you know, I would probably behave a lot like Paris if I had somebody like, you know what I mean? If I had somebody like Helen, Helen of Troy, bro, if I had somebody like that, yeah, I would, you know what I mean? I would steal her. I would definitely, you know what I'm saying? Not that I'm Orlando Bloom or anything, but I'm just saying it's just like, yeah, I'm definitely, you know what I mean? I'm definitely choosing choosing this woman, you know? So I don't know. I, I also liked how... Achilles kind of I'm trying to think. He he's the way he pushes back against Perseus, who's uh, Rose Byrne's character, who's who's great in the movie. Um, I like the kind of back and forth between the two of them because Perseus is you know, obviously she's the enemy. Or, you know, uh, uh, associated with the enemy. Like, she lives in Troy, and she's been taken by the men of the opposing sides. Anyways, Achilles takes her in, and they kind of have this argument, debate. They kind of just, like, try to get to know each other. And I like the way that Achilles and Briseis antagonize each other but then you know essentially it's like let's get it on but I like um the way that they kind of 
size up one another. She's just kind of like, you're a soldier, you're a killer, you're you're just one thing. You know what I mean? It's like, what, you know, you're nothing else except for that. And he's like, I mean, what are you talking about? Like, I, you know, I didn't really choose any of this. I was born to be a warrior. And now I, here I am, a, a warrior. You know, I'm not, I'm not really anything else, you know? And she's just kind of like, you know, she's talking to him as if like, you, you're, you're just this monster and you don't care about anything and the gods will, the gods will smite you. And he's just kind of like, the gods, what are you, is he, he, not kind of what are you talking about, but he's telling her like, there's, there's something that you're missing in this whole, in these gods that you worship. It's like, you shouldn't try to be like the gods or revere them as, as you think. You should appreciate who you are and how you live in this life because the the true honesty, the truth of life is that it's precious because it ends. You know, there's an ending to it. And because they live forever, the gods that you cherish, the gods that you praise and the gods that you, you know, pray to are the ones that really want what you have. And that's mortality. They don't want to live forever. They're, they're you know... They're tired, they're old, they're, they hate being these quote-unquote all-powerful beings. They want to be mortal and appreciate all that life is and its mortality. And they want to appreciate, you know, so to speak, they want to appreciate like every single second of breath that they have because they know it's going to end. And so he basically tells her that and she's just kind of like, I don't want to say speechless, but she's kind of just like, oh, damn, like, you know what I mean? He, he, he spin, he's talking right now. He's really, he's really saying something next, next level. And then she tries to kill him and then he ends up having sex with her. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, typical love, romance, you know what I mean? What are you going to do? But yeah, I think there were so, there were just great moments in the film. I, I felt like every scene had a, had a pretty good moment. Um, I can't think of a of a, a scene that was kind of like dragged on too long or I felt like was like, man, that's damn, that 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 scene sucked. I was Um There's also a time where Achilles challenges King Agamemnon, um, which was an amazing, amazing scene in my opinion. They finally break through to the beach, getting ready for the next day. And they're about to raid Troy. And Achilles, basically, you know, he was the first one on the beach. He was the first. He was on the front line. He fought. He pushed the Troy soldiers back, you know, and they took the beach. So now it's like, you know, what's going to happen the, the next day? And Achilles and Agamemnon have this very strong scene where they talk to one another. And he kind of just says to him, you know, um, man, I, I, I have it, but I just don't, I don't have it in, in full. Essentially, Achilles is arguing against King Agamemnon that he didn't really do anything. And it was the soldiers that did the fighting. Essentially, kind of, you know, one-upping uh, Agamemnon saying like, while you were sailing on onto the beach that we had already conquered i was out there fighting i was at the i was leading the soldiers i was leading the men where where were you and what were you doing and essentially he was just kind of like nobody remembers the soldiers all right i'm king agamemnon and nobody's going to remember achilles nobody's going to remember that guy or that guy or that guy they're going to remember me all right history remembers kings not soldiers and I just remember that that kind of interaction, that fierceness in between the both of them. I remember there was this moment where I was just kind of like, that's the king, you know, and he's to be respected and revered and everybody's supposed to basically admire him or, or let him do what he wants. Uh, I mean, uh, follow what he says, but Achilles challenges him and that was something that I, I liked because it was like, He's only able to challenge him because of his superior strength. 
you know? Because he's Achilles, he's able to talk back. And, and that was the point where I realized that, like, you can do, as long as you're good at something, you can always justify kind of, in, in a sense, talking back, right? Like, um, you know, I think... If you're, you know, if you're the president of the United States, like if the president of the United States came to me and told me that like, hey, man, you got to do this, this and this. Like if the government knocked on my door or whatever, like Secret Service was like, hey, the president needs you to let's just say he's like, you have to become a pilot. And I was like, uh, I don't really have any. And they're like. You, you don't have a choice in this. We're telling you, you're going to be a pilot and you're going to go to school, aviation, all this other stuff. And you're going to, you know, we're going to basically force you to do this thing. And I'm going to be like, uh, okay, fine. Uh, I guess I'm going to be a pilot. If you're going to, you know, if you're going to pay for me to do this and you're going to force me to do it, then, you know, I'll happily, I'll happily do it. You know what I mean? Whereas if you're like the top pilot, you know what I mean? Like if you're in the air force and you and you're the top dude out there you're like you you fly that plane to perfection you can you can do it all okay you're the top guy and then he kind of talks to you and tells you you know he puts you in the war room with him or whatever like the situation room and whatnot and you're in there and you're the top guy and he looks at you and and he kind of tells you that like hey you have to do this i i guess maybe the president's the wrong the wrong metaphor. But anyways, he's kind of just like, you have to do this, okay? And then the leader is kind of like, no, we have to do this. Like, he pushes back. He gives him, I guess it's more so of a advice. You know, they're, they're running the country. But essentially speaking is that, like, you're able to push back. You're able to challenge. You're able to, like, do certain things because you're good at what you do. And you see this often with... um kind of like mean characters or like angry characters. You know those characters that are just like aggressive and mean and nobody really likes, but they stick around because they're good at what they do. You know what I mean? Um trying to give some examples here. Uh I I I can't I can't put it on my finger right now, but there are certain characters where it's like they're a little bit aggressive and mean and they're kind of like the they're kind of like the the mean ones, but they're also like the ones that you want to have your back. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, he he's mean and aggressive, but he knows how to fight. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the kind of thing I'm talking about here. Um, so then there's obviously the the fight between Hector and Achilles after Patroclus gets killed by Hector. Because Hector thought that was Achilles because he was wearing a helmet. And then it turns out it's just Patroclus. And everybody thought it was Achilles, but it wasn't. And then he d ends up dying. And then Achilles shows up to kill Hector. He goes up to the gates alone. And he, he screams, Hector! Hector! You know, he kind of does this big scream at the gates and Hector knows that he's like, I, I, I gotta get my one-on-one -on -one with him. <coughs> Sorry, my bad. So he's basically like, yeah, I got a, I got a one on one Achilles right now. And I really like that fight scene. I thought it was really... I definitely thought it was the the key fight in the in the overall uh movie. I thought that was like the best one. Um was it choreographed? It was it kind of like not accurate? Sure, why not? But I did like it a lot. And I also just like the the idea of like him just being like, I'm going to kill you tonight. I'm, I'm killing you right here, right now. And then he follows through on it. Like, he doesn't, you know what I mean? He doesn't die. But, go, you know, that was that was a great fight. I, I did enjoy the, the choreography. I thought that the set pieces were also quite, were also really great. I thought that the, 
you know, the temples and the overall, um, gosh, I, I can't speak the the overall setting was very, was very well, well made. I thought everything was, was really good there. Um, let me think. I mean, I'll, I, 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 you know, the, the ending is where it kind of like, you know, it makes sense. It happens. You know, they build the Trojan horse and then Troy bring it in. And then, you know, obviously they attack. But I was just kind of like, that was kind of like the least interesting part of it was the like the the rest of the, you know, falling action, I guess, of like, oh, once they take in the horse, then it's like that's that's the end of it. But I um, I also wasn't a big fan of the ending, you know, just because it's like. I didn't want Achilles to die, and I was like, ah, that's that sucks, you know what I mean? And, and Paris, of all people, I was like, come on. But anyways, I, um, yeah, there were, there were moments like that where I, I, I kind of, towards the end, you know, I wasn't that, uh, that investor or that in love with it anymore. But, you know, I think that they, I think that the movie overall was one of my, one of my favorite, or I guess one of the better historical films that like I kind of rewatch from time to time because there really is just like just about everything in there. There's feelings about love and philosophy in there, kind of like why do you fight or why would you fight or, you know, questions of following orders because people in authority tell you to. It's like having your own mind. There's the what's it called people you know trying to learn from from people learn from from others there is you know an art in deception um war overall the the whole movie it just it just has a little bit of everything. It's it's about love, it's about violence, it's about camaraderie. There's just all kinds of of moments in there that make you think, but at the same time kind of opens your eyes to the times, so to speak, you know. Maybe I'm thinking too deep about it. Probably probably am, but I thought that this movie was fantastic. I, I enjoy watching it from time to time. Um, one of Brad Pitt's better roles um, from, I guess, like those the early 2000s. Um, but he does have a great filmography. He does, he does do great, great stuff. But this one I, I did like in particular. Um, let me think. Yeah, I, I, I just feel like it was such a star-studded cast you you rarely see that anymore it's like uh, them do like a huge huge thing like that so you know i i enjoyed it a lot um let me think shout out to everybody who did this movie i i don't know my my feelings about it are kind of they're kind of I, I, I'm saying my feelings because it's just that, like, I feel like the movie isn't 100% like, because I've, I've seen another interpretation of, like, the Battle of the Tro of Troy, and I thought that it was also really good, but at the same time, I was like, am I kind of, like, biased because I, I like the, the story of the first one I watched, so I just kind of, like, it's all it's all over the place. There are, there are many different... Uh, retellings of the story, but I think this one's probably my my favorite. But it's also probably because it's it was the first one I watched about it. So you know, I don't know. Take it for what you will. Um, I'm trying to think here. Let me think outside the box. I guess I'll end it on this. Um, there's a scene between Achilles after he just kills Hector, and then the king of Troy comes out of the gates, comes to Achilles, and is basically like. Hey man, you killed my son, you know, and I, I hate you, 
but you can still give me his body. You can still let me hold the, the funeral rituals that I'm entitled to. You know, I loved him every single day and you can still show me respect. I can still show you respect. And there's still sort of like a, there's a chance for us to be more than just a king and a soldier. It's a, a father and a son, you know what I mean? And so there's a certain level of respect that Achilles have, has for the king. And there's a level of respect that the, the king has for Achilles for fighting for his his family. And then for him to kind of come to their greatest warrior and bow at his feet and essentially be like, give me back my son. There's a, you know, there's, there's a certain bravery that comes with that. And he respected it. And I really liked that moment because it was just so... There was so much that they wish they could do to each other. Achilles, if he kills the king, I mean, he would be, he would be the hero. He would be the guy. You know what I mean? But if, but he lets him go. And the king is like, if I kill, he basically infiltrated on his own. He could have easily tried to kill Achilles. You know what I mean? He could have snuck in a few extra men, I guess. It just, it felt so raw and it felt very real of like a father just trying to mourn his son and a man seeing a father's love or somebody who is truly worthy of, uh, of respect, unlike King Agamemnon. So anyways... Troy, I mean, great, great movie. Don't know if it's a perfect historical historical movie. Oh, actually, let me. It's not historically accurate, but it is really it is really good. It's it's a top tier movie in my in my book. So, anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you guys all next time. Thank you.